Um, hi, everyone. My name is Diana Martins Franco. I am a PhD student at Valongo Observatory in the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And today I'm going to present you the, my PhD work on Veidi, the emission of complex molecules in luminous infrared galaxies. Uh, ooh, let me see. I'm not... Well, I don't know. Okay, so let me start with some definitions. Uh, infrared luminous galaxies here, I use galaxies as that have an excess of infrared emission. And we can see uh, a comparison here uh, with the SED of a Euler, uh, ultra luminous infrared galaxies, galaxy, sorry, with a starburst, a disk of a normal galaxy and uh, elliptical one. So we see clearly that we have an excess of infrared emission. And this ex excess can be powered by star formation activity AGN or a combination of these two things. Uh, we have some examples of this type of galaxies. In the local universe, we can see Eulerks. Here we see an image of an Euler. Uh, we see also submillimeter galaxies at high redshifts and dust obscured galaxies that we call dots. Uh, and uh, a characteristic very important about these galaxies is the large amount of dust. Uh, we see this clearly in the mid-infrared and far-infrared emission. And at the smallest scales, we see that dust becomes PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Uh, the PAHs are a class of molecules formed by benzene, this molecule that I'm showing here. And this molecule is composed by six atoms of carbon and six of hydrogen. And we also can say that PAHs are ubiquitous in the medium, mid interstellar medium of luminous infrared galaxies. But what we can say about the properties of these galaxies when concerning PAHs? Well, we can use mid infrared spectroscopy to unveil the, the obscure properties of the subjects. And as a first goal of this work, we try to understand the impact of these two different, uh, actually three different uh, power sources. And when I say uh, power sources, I'm meaning star formation activity, AGN, or a combination of these two, th three, sorry, two things. And we, we want to undertake an astrochemical analysis proving the PAH emission uh, of these galaxies. Our interest is by the size, charge, and the composition of these molecules. Uh, to do that, we analyze a sample of almost 700 galaxies up to redshift 3.7 from GOES and ATLAS surveys. And just for a clarify, GOES is composed by LURGs and ULURGs, and ATLAS is composed by Seiferts, ULURGs, Starburst galaxies, SMGs, and other ones. The data that we use is the SL mode of IRS Spitzer. And we have spectra from uh, 4 to 15 microns and low resolution spectra. Uh, our methodology is based on first spectral decomposition of these, these spectra because we need to isolate the emission of PAHs. So we use a tool that I know that some of you know by Pathfitch. And here in the black dots, we see the spectra of the galaxy. Uh, in purple, we see a component of uh, line emission. We see the continuum uh, shown in red and the PAHs features in blue. So we proceed with a molecular breakdown into different types of, of molecules. Uh, as I said, we are interested about the sizes, the charge and the composition of these molecules. 
So we can break this emission of DAHs into neutral charge, small and big molecules. Here I show you uh, an example for the galaxies of for the galaxy of ARP 2020. Well, our, our main results are based on the predominance of small and neutral PAHs. So here in the left, we see the results for a GOES survey. And in the right, we see for ATLAS. Uh, we see clearly that neutral and small molecules here uh, represented by blue and green dots are predominant on this analysis. And here I show on the X axis uh, the strength of an AGM. So uh, for lower values, we see more star forming galaxies and for higher values, we see more active galaxies. So uh, when we analyze this, we see that for Atlas, we have a, a a more predominance of neutral molecules, but we see a kind of tricky uh, result that uh, we see that Seifert's shown more neutral uh, contribution for these for uh, galaxies that are that are more active. But this is a still an open result because we have not completed the sample of Atlas, and we see actually. Uh, that galaxies that are considered less uh, active have a less pronounced uh, contribution of neutral molecules. So I don't know how I'm, I'm in time, but I will let you with my conclusions. Uh, we have a predominance of small neutral and pure molecules, molecules that we call molecules that are composed only by C and H. Uh, our results are most, mostly consistent with Drain and Lee model for PAH emission under the submission of a radiation field. Uh, the radiation field is considered, uh, uh, it, it can be affect the, the ISM astrochemistry. And we see clearly that AGN are capable of altering the, these molecules, but we see these features are uh, still significant. So it, this means that AGN does not completely destroy PAHs. This is in agreement with recent works, as I wish see this morning by Alonso Herro. And our main conclusion is that we need more especially resolved data because we actually need to see what is happening in each region of these objects. So I'll take your question now. Thank you. Excellent, Jana. Thanks very much for sticking to the time again. Um, we have one question on Slack. Um, two in, in the meantime. So first question for you, Jana. Can you comment on how important the longer spectral baseline of Spitzer IRS is, com is compared to the ground-based accessible N-band for doing a good PAH composition? The longer, I'm sorry, I, I missed the, the first part. How, 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 how important is Spitzer data with respect to ground-based N-band data? Yeah, it's, it's kind of complicated because we actually did not see the first part of SL mode. We don't see 6.2, uh, 3.3, 7.7 .7 bands. We actually just can see 11.3 uh, bands and, and so on. But our interest is it's based on lower wavelengths. So it's complicated for us to study uh, just the, the more wavelengths uh, Regina. Okay, very good. Um, a second question. Do your objects have silicate features? Yes. Most Eulers have. typically have, have silicates. Yeah, and we have uh, deep uh, absorptions, uh, but we actually didn't see emission, uh, emission in silicates. And this is kind of interesting. 